Good morning, saints. It's good to see you all. We are going to bless the Lord on this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning. And I want to thank everybody for all the preparations and bringing guitars in. I actually have three guitars to choose from today. Um, uh, different people brought them from different places, and I appreciate that. And so I kind of uh, pull things together. Picks from even another lo uh, a whole bag of picks. Thank you, Terry, very much. We're going to bless the name of the Lord today. And uh, as we get started, what I was going to say is today is a special day for a number of reasons. Um, uh, we're going to be... Uh, wrapping up the Book of Acts uh, sermon series, um, which uh, we'll talk about. And then uh, afterwards, we're going to have a, uh, a light lunch for anyone who can stay. And then following that, a, uh, a new members class. And it's, so it's a kind of a special day for us here. And as we, uh, as we wrap up the Book of Acts series, what I'm going to be encouraging us to do is I'd like you to consider, we've been studying for the last seven weeks the Book of Acts, Maybe if you would consider maybe a verse from the book of Acts or a story from the book of Acts that has made maybe a significant impact on you during these, during these seven, seven weeks. In other words, when you think back over the, over the series, what's, uh, what's something significant? Maybe the Lord spoke to you out of the book of Acts. But let's, uh, let's bless the Lord as we get started today. Father, thank you so much for all you're doing. We bless your name today. Amen. Sing the chorus. This is amazing grace. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing. you've done for me who brings our chaos back into order who makes the orphan a son and daughter you king of glory the king of all the who rules the nations who rules the nations with truth and justice shines like the sun in amazing grace. thinking about different choruses, hymns we could sing this morning, and one came to mind, a, a great old hymn, um, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Let's sing that. What would be a good key for that? Hold on a second. Hmm. Let's do it. Uh, let's try it in the key of C. Is that too high? Great is thy faithfulness. I don't think that'll be fine. But wait. Oh, God, no. 
God. He is an absolutely wonderful God. through the scriptures and we see different sections that really uh, declare the greatness of God certainly many of them are focused on his his unchanging attributes his uh, omniscience his omnipotence his uh, just the the you know just the his his eternal eternality um, there's so many so many things but one of the things we find is that oftentimes one of the great, if you will, revelations that we get of the majesty and greatness of God is seen in the mercy he has shown us. In other words, we know his greatness by the, we look around, we see the universe, it's like, wow, who, what kind of artist painted this, this masterpiece? It's, it's like, it's impossible to comprehend really. Um, but his mercy, his love, his tenderness, his kindness really come into focus when we look at what he did for us. Uh, the book of Revelation begins, um, and I think it's verse 5, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests unto our God. Um, in other words, the, 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 the anthem of the saints forever 
He is going to be certainly focused on his, his unchanging attributes, but seen in a sense through, the, uh, through the, the, the prism of his love and his mercy for us. There's a chorus I want us to sing, uh, that really uh, a, a beautiful contemporary chorus, um, that in a sense reflects this sense of we, we see the majesty of God in the mercy and the kindness he has shown us. It's called Who You Say I Am. The sun sets free. Oh, it's free. kings and priests unto himself and we share in sonship it's absolutely off the charts who am I that the highest king would welcome me I was lost but he brought me in all oh, his love
thank you, Lord. We come before you today, Lord, the one who loved us, who redeemed us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, God. Amen. There's one more chorus I'd like to sing because with that revelation, the revelation of who we are in Christ, not according to our own goodness, we, are in Christ. we need to be a praising people. I think sometimes we get that revelation and then we stop. I don't want us to stop today. I want us to praise God. In heavenly armor will You know, I was, uh, I think we're too silent too often. That's what I think. I really do. I think, uh, I think, I think, you know, the, yeah, we tiptoe. We tiptoe too much and uh, we need to be a praising people, um, you know, and uh, uh, I think, I think a lot of times the first, first person I need to preach to is me, right? I mean, that's, that's where it begins. We need to remind ourselves of who he is, who we are in him. I was thinking uh, as we sang that chorus about David at Ziklag. And uh, after the, you know, they arrived and the, the city was burned down and everything stolen, the wives and the children taken away. And, uh, you know, David, uh, you know, they were talking about stoning David. I mean, they were so angry. I mean, everybody's weeping. They lost everything. And, uh, you know, they're blaming David. It's all his fault. And, uh, you know, what does David do? I mean, he's weeping too. I mean, he's, he's, lost, he's lost his family. Um, and you know what he does? He says, bring the, bring the linen ephod. I'm getting into the presence of God. I'm, I, I, need, I, need, I need something from above. And uh, saints, I want to say, that's available to us like 24-7. Um, and uh, I want us to be a praising people, a people that... Uh, in a sense, recognize today's a day to seek God, to be, uh, to be, you know, joyful in Him, 
to remind ourselves of who we are in him and see the, see the power and purpose of God on, just revealed in a, in a fresh way that, in a sense, then lifts us up, that gives us buoyancy by the power of the Spirit, God moving. So let's be a praising people. Amen. So um, as I mentioned today, I want to encourage you. In a moment, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll open up the word. But what we're going to do today is I'm going to ask people to just share maybe something that uh, really struck you uh, personally during our time in the book of Revelation, uh, not Revelation, uh, book of Acts. Yeah, <laughs> it was a revelation. The revelations you got from the book of Acts, um, things that God showed you, maybe uh, something he taught you, impressed upon you. Um, and uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll do some sharing. Um, right now, I just want to mention a few announcements. First of all, uh, after the service, we'll have a light lunch. Thank you, uh, Pam. Thank you for organizing things. Really appreciate it very, very much. Um, and then uh, following that, we'll have a new members class. If you've never been through the new members class, I encourage you to, uh, uh, to join with us in that. I'm anticipating uh, that it could be somewhere around an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes. As long as the preacher doesn't get carried away, uh, it won't be too long. Uh, I've got some handouts, and I'll be giving those. If it's been a while since you've taken it, love to have you stick around and, uh, and join us for that. Um, and, uh, you know, membership, membership in the local church is significant. Um, and, uh, you know, we would say that certainly membership, the, the, the concept um, to a local church, we, we, we're not sure, you know, it's, it's not necessarily directly biblical, but the principles are biblical. And the principle is that I'm identifying with a company of people uh, who I recognize God's called me to walk with, uh, to serve, and to, in a sense, be covered by. Uh, in a sense of accountability. And thank God for, you know, all the churches all around, you know, the globe. Um, but the question, in a sense, for a pastor is, who, who is he stewarding? Who is he, who is he shepherding? And uh, in, a, in some ways, membership is a way of saying, I'm called to be here. Doesn't mean that you're not engaging with believers from all around the area and around the globe. I know I do. I'm, I'm involved with saints from, you know, from all around the globe, and it, it's, it's exciting. Uh, but I have a local assembly, a local company of people that I'm walking with, committed to, and that they know uh, they, they're watching out for me. Um, and so uh, uh, that'll be important. So we'll cover that today. Um, what else do we need to mention? Wednesday night, we'll continue with the Bible study. Um, uh, brothers here, the sisters on the other side. Uh, that's 7 o'clock, Monday through Friday. Darlene and I are still doing the Facebook Live, and that's, been, that's just been a lot of, a lot of enjoyment for us. Very, very encouraging. Um, anything else I need to mention? That's right. Thank you. Saturday evening. For those of you that are members, uh, or if you'd like to uh, uh, just you know, sit in on it, uh, the, the annual business meeting for uh, CFC, uh, that includes Moira, Potsdam, Madrid, Canton, and Richville, will be Saturday, 7 o'clock. We'll have a physical gathering at CFC Madrid. And then if you want to uh, uh, Zoom instead or, or uh, live stream, uh, we'll be sending out a link this week. So um, if, uh, if you're a member and you didn't get, what's that? It's not, a dinner. it's not a dinner. That's right. Because of COVID and everything, we're not doing a dinner. OK, great. Um, so uh, um, what was I going to say? Oh, if you're a member and you didn't get an email from the office this past week, it's because our, uh, we're, you're not on our mailing list. Remind me afterwards. We'll get you on that email list. Um, so that'll be this Saturday. Clyde, you have something to share? Take a tea break. Take a tea break. Amen. Uh, this is one of the things I wanted to say. It, it came as I happened to actually see a Facebook post. And with everything going on in the world today, uh, they just mentioned one verse from Hebrews. And it was uh, Hebrews 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and forever. So that's what we got to learn to do is just lift our hearts up to him and let him take care of our worries, take care of our uh, fears, and just let him lead us. But I want to begin to uh, say that uh, I stand to honor Pastor Rick today for Pastor's uh, 
appreciation for the month of October. I know this is November, but <laughs> the way things have been going on, it's uh, today was the most opportune time. Blame it on COVID. Blame it on COVID. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. So if you uh, if you consult the dictionary, you'll see that a pastor is often defined as a link between the people and God. Pastor Rick, we uh, at the congregation here at Grace Community Church do not need a dictionary to tell us the meaning of your role since you so wonderfully define the word with your life. In addition to en uh, enjoying your sermons from the pulpit, we appreciate the sermons you lived out right before our eyes. Your example serves to inspire us to live our lives before fellow man in a manner that would please God. We also deeply appreciate the special things you do during the year, from Bible studies to preparing and preaching messages doing Facebook Live, and just being available when we are in need. And of course, remain profoundly affected by the little thing you do, and that's just being a friend to each and every one of us. Of course, I must include someone else in this acknowledgement because behind every great pastor is a pastor's wife <laughs> who endures his every mood, soaks in the negatives, and gives him... <laughs> and gives him the uplifting needs at the times of stress. Darlene, you are another reason Pastor Rick is who he is today. And thank you for being a pastor's wife. And like I said, not only are you a spiritual leader, but you are our friend. And we just want to, as a congregation, give you this. Try not take your notes there. <laughs> oh, that's very kind. Thank you. That's that's very very touching. That's very very touching. Um, uh, you know, I I I I think the joy of walking with brothers and sisters is just it's just un unbelievable. I just I just love it. And uh, you know, last was it last week? I was I was out. Yeah, I had had the COVID test and it didn't come back negative till till Tuesday. Um, so I um, and uh, I just was so disappointed to not be here with the saints. Just so disappointed. Thank you. This this really means a lot. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, very very kind. Um, anything you want to share? Thanks for putting up with my moods. <laughs> <laughs> all, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> she does. How did they know? <laughs> Who told? <laughs> oh, good. Um, anything else that we need to mention? Clyde, thank you. Very, very nice. Um, uh, oh, there was an election this week. Um, and I... I, I, I think it's kind of... Is it settled at this point? I don't know what this... I, okay, so, uh, but I want to say something. Um, uh, you know, I was thinking about, uh, I, I, as we've been processing elections and things like that, I, af after the election, I, was, I kept thinking back to 2016, and, uh, uh, you know, just, it was, it was like chaos following the election. You know, college class, classes canceled, safe rooms, um, you name it. Um, I just want to say that we, we serve a Savior who is not shaken uh, by any of the goings-on, and uh, uh, regardless of who you voted for and, you know, whatever, I want you to know Jesus is Lord. Um, I, have an, I have a vested interest in this nation, and I want to see this nation prosper. But at the end of the day, uh, uh, it's of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Uh, Isaiah chapter 9. And so... Uh, we have absolute confidence. So um, I'm just I'm just going into the future, saying, you know what, God, you're going to do something great. I've been praying for revival for America. I'm going to continue to pray for revival for America. Um, whatever needs to happen next in terms of the election results, um, 
you know, may the Lord, uh, may the Lord in some ways intervene in a, in a wonderful way. Uh, I pray that there wouldn't be, you know, all kinds of, you know, craziness and violence and things like that. Uh, we pray for revival. We pray the, for the move of God in our nation. Um, you know, uh, over the centuries, uh, one of the reasons why when we look at great revivals, they, they, they strike us for the greatness of them, whether it's, you know, I'm thinking about the Great Awakening in the U.S., Second Great Awakening, uh, fast forward to the 20th century, you know, the charismatic outpouring, things like that. One of the reasons why they're kind of like they get your attention is because it wasn't like that and then God moved. In other words, things were bad and then God moved. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the reasons why, if everything was always great all along, it wouldn't be an awakening. Does that make sense? In other words, it's, it's when things are dark and God moves, and he can. The problem is sometimes when, when we look around and we see brokenness in our nation, we think, oh, it's impossible. I want to declare to you it's not impossible, uh, that God can yet again move, and I believe he wants to. So let's take a moment and pray for our nation uh, again as we process the, the election and uh, don't know uh, the final outcome, but I, I'm sure we will soon. Yeah, go ahead. Amen. 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 Father, I come before you and I do thank you for your work. Uh, Lord, we value our nation. Lord, and uh, we value, um, uh, we, we want to see a place where we can live quiet and peaceable lives uh, serving you. Uh, reaching our neighbors and the nations. Uh, Lord, we want to see that. We want to see a place where, uh, where the value of life is upheld, um, uh, beginning with conception. We want to see that. We want to see uh, a place where, uh, where every, every person has the opportunity uh, to grow up and hear the gospel, to respond to Christ. And so, Father, we, we pray, would you move would you move in, a, in an amazing way in our nation? Uh, Lord, we, we pray that, uh, Lord, that you, would, that you would touch. I pray, God, that this would be a, a season when the church uh, is, is uh, maybe pruned, but pruned for the purposes of bearing greater fruit. Uh, Lord, if there's, a, if there's a, an ache in my heart uh, on the contemporary political landscape, it's the ache for... Um, uh, the things Christians are contributing, the, uh, the, uh, the, the ill-conceived ideas being put forward by so many believers. Father, I pray right now that you would sharpen us, uh, Lord, that you, would, uh, that you would cause us to be a people who hunger and thirst for righteousness uh, in a way that is, 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 is actually absolutely going to honor you and that you would move. We do pray for yet another awakening. Uh, God, I pray, we, it's, the, the books aren't written yet on the next great awakening, and so we pray for it, O oh God. Father, I pray that you raise up the next generation of apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, uh, men and women who have giftings of the Holy Spirit in all kinds of ways. We pray for that. I pray, O oh God, that these would be the days when, regardless of what happens with, uh, with, with, with nations, in a sense, uh, and the fate of nations, we pray that the church would shine. Father, I pray for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Good. Um, okay, let's do this. Uh, Clyde, do you have the, the basket there? We can receive the offering. If we could do that right now, Clyde, if you can mask up and do that, that'd be super. Um, Lord, thank you for the opportunity we have to present to you our, our, our finances, our uh, that which represents the, the fruit of our labors, um, Lord, our time, our energy, its sacrifice. And Lord, we bless you, thanking you for all you've given to us. Amen. Amen. Clyde, if you could do that, that'd be great. So let's open our Bibles to the book of Acts. And uh, 
By the way, I want to give some, uh, some thank yous as we wrap up the series, Acts, the Continuing Story. Uh, just some thank yous. First of all, uh, Paul Brown, uh, Paul Brown, who attends the Potsdam Church, um, uh, he did a lot of work to help prepare the pastors uh, for, uh, for the series. Um, and uh, so I want to thank him for that. Uh, I want to thank Anastasia Brown. Anastasia is Paul's daughter, and she, uh, she works at the office over at Madrid um, and uh, has done a great job with coordinating things, sending out emails, all kinds of stuff. And then uh, our daughter, Liana, uh, put the graphic together, Acts the Continuing Story, great graphic with the pen to the paper, uh, kind, of, kind of captured the idea of the continuing story, the unfolding story. In other words, Acts chapter 28 uh, comes to an end, but the book doesn't really end. It's like it's still being uh, lived out. So thank those folks. Uh, one of the things Paul did was each week he, uh, he prepared well in advance. He prepared uh, the material for the weekly Bible studies. He also uh, gave a suggested uh, preaching passage for the pastors each week. And uh, this week uh, assigned Acts chapter 28, verses 17 to 31, a lengthy passage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the passage, and then I'm going to give you time to share, maybe some reflections. And uh, this microphone's on. You can come right up here uh, if you'd like. Uh, that way it'll be on the Facebook Live for anyone who's joining us by Facebook. So I'm going to read Acts chapter 28, starting in verse 17, the very end of the book of Acts. And it came to pass after three days that Paul called the leaders of the Jews together. So when they had come together, he said to them, Men and brethren, though I have done nothing against our people or the customs of our fathers, yet I was delivered as a prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, who, when they had examined me, wanted to let me go because there was no cause for putting me to death. But when the Jews spoke against it, I was compelled to appeal to Caesar, not that I had anything of which to accuse my nation, for this reason, therefore, I have called for you to see you and speak with you, because for the hope of Israel, I am bound with this chain. Then they said to him, we neither receive letters from Judea concerning you, nor have any of the brethren who came reported or spoken any evil of you, but we desire to hear from you what you think, for concerning this sect, we know that it is spoken against everywhere. So when they had appointed him a, a, a day, Many came to him at his lodging, to whom he explained and solemnly testified of the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus from both the law of Moses and the prophets from morning till evening. And some were persuaded by the things which, he, which were spoken, and some disbelieved. So when they did not agree among themselves, they departed after Paul had said one word. The Holy Spirit spoke rightly through Isaiah the prophet to our fathers, saying, Go to this people and say, Hearing, you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing, you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears. Lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. Therefore, let it be known to you that the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles, and they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had a great dispute among themselves. Then Paul dwelt two whole years in his own rented house and received all who came to him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no one forbidding him. Good. The close of Acts, the book of Acts, chapter 28. All right, so uh, we've been uh, looking at the book of Acts now for a number of weeks. Um, maybe, a, maybe a thought, something that at this point in time stands out to you as a significant nugget that the Lord, uh, Lord put in your heart. Who wants to be first? Steve, come on up. Hey, everybody. I think for me it's just remarkable when I look back, um, it's not like a verse, but it's people that I made this journey with that, and memories that I have that are sticking in my mind. And if you're me, that's very unique, that's very different. I'm usually really into the words and kind of in my own head, but this is snapshots. 
starting the series, uh, Theophilus, when I told you what Jesus began to do and teach, and just the introduction to the series and the expectation that, you know, that Pastor Rick, you said, you know, I have this faith expectation that we're going to be the body of Christ, that the Holy Spirit is going to allow Jesus to continue to do and to speak through us. It just made me so excited. It seemed so real. It was like, he's the vine, I'm the branch. Jesus is here. He's still doing, and he's still speaking through us. And I just had this excite excitement as we started. Then uh, Dr. Wilson, where he was like, he was only a disciple. Ananias, when he laid hands on Saul, he was only a disciple. You know, he wasn't, didn't have a title, didn't have this, didn't have that. And I just felt really super empowered by that, to go back to my first love. When I got saved, I wasn't anything except somebody who was going to hell, who was now going to heaven, who knew Jesus and just went running around telling everybody and watching Jesus do miracles and do what he did. I was just a disciple. I'm still a child of God. I'm still only a disciple. There's no other need. You don't need to be anything but that. I love that. Just, just so exciting. And then I remember, Dar, you teaching... Uh, sharing and and one of the things that hit me so strongly was they didn't pray for safety when the persecution hit they prayed for more boldness that lit a fire in me it's like god forgive me i've been looking for this safety and then you just said it again we have a safe place let's be bold let's turn up the heat let's let's just Let's just go combustible. Let's just catch on fire. Like, yeah. You know, it's like, I don't want to be safe. I want to be fruitful. I want to be on fire. Um, and then, Jonathan, when you shared, it's one of the richest teachings, word experiences I can remember. Um, wow. Like, that's going to be on my, like, top 10 sermon highlight film of my life. Like, that was so impactful. And I could cry. It's like, but the, what I loved about it was how God chose to start the Philippian church and who was in there. Lydia and, and, and the jailer. And I, Teresa and I were talking just the other day. It's like, what happened to that guy? Like, the whole jail was busted wide open. You know what I mean? Like, he didn't kill himself, but, like, did he get called on the carpet? Did he get fired? <laughs> did, did half the people leave after he got saved? I mean, what happened? I mean, you don't, you don't ever find out. But, and then how you tied it into the book of Philippians. Man, oh, man, I just been pouring over the book of Philippians and just thinking about that early church and how God chose to get those people saved through the beating of Paul and Silas. I mean, it's just, and singing in the deepest dungeon. Just those, just those, those, those pictures. So uh, those are snapshots that uh, that I got, and uh, just such an incredible encouragement. Oh yeah, and then um, Pastor Ben, uh, don't argue with God. <laughs> that was a good one. So um, the, the one thing that I'm, I'm probably going to carry with me a, a really long time, um, I, know, I know I'm going to be chewing on this a long time because I've been chewing on it um, since Pastor Ben preached. Um, but I, he, he said it so succinctly, um, obedience precedes understanding and that was number one a great line um, it's so succinct and it's, there's so much meaning in there um, but the the truth of it is something that I've been really chewing on that um, I have a predilection to want to understand something before I do it and I'm more on that cautious and I you know risk management type of person um, but as I'm thinking about this and the examples that we have in the book of Acts it's like that no that's so right God is a Lord you know, Christ is a Lord um, he's a shepherd um, 
God is our Father, if those roles require obedience from those who are part of the group, um, and obedience that doesn't understand, you know, kids don't understand why Father says what he says. Um, servants don't understand the instructions of the Lord. Sheep don't understand why the shepherd is doing what he's doing, where he's taking them. Um, and so neither are we supposed to understand everything that's going to happen or why we're doing what God calls us to do. We're called to do it. Um, and really, if we insisted on understanding everything first, nothing would ever get done at all. Um, and, so, and so God calls us into the kind of faith that simply trusts um, he's done enough to earn that trust, right? I mean, he died on the cross. He's shown his love. Um, he's, he's met with us personally, and he's sealed us with his Holy Spirit. The trust has been won, and so when he gives you something to do um, or he, he starts to show you some truth in the word, um, live it out before you understand it fully. Uh, don't get caught up in the scholastic um, pride trap of I'm going to understand this fully before I put it into action. That's okay for science. You know, you want to make sure the medicine works before you distribute it. That's good there. But when it comes to the kingdom of God and living a life um, that honors him, obedience precedes understanding. That's, that's really rich. Not able to come up here a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I streamed the Potsdam service, and there was a oh wow that hit me. It's like we all heard the story of the Philippian jailer. We sing it. We uh, talk about it often. Jailer gets God creates an earthquake. Jailer gets saved. Philippian church is started. But the oh wow was is Paul had to be imprisoned for the jailer to be set free. And it's just a thought, where are we willing to go? That someone could be set free. Um, just a, a quick thought that I had from going through is there were two men in Acts that are named Ananias. There is Ananias and Sapphira at the beginning, and his end is pretty well seen. He lies to the Holy Spirit and is, is uh, he dies and is buried. And then there's Ananias who uh, is asked to go to someone who is persecuting the church who might think, hey, this is my end. Like, I, I'm going to go talk to Saul, and I'm like, he'll arrest me and throw me in prison. Who knows what, what he might have been thinking. But he obeys, and God uses Paul amazingly. And who knows what else Ananias does in his life. But it's such a juxtaposition. There are two men, two very different outcomes. There is no other name under heaven by which we can be saved. Jesus is the only way, and how we respond to him matters not only for our life, it matters for the people that we're put in authority over. Ananias was an authority over his wife, Sapphira, and her end was not good either. Um, and uh, Ananias pre uh, goes and prays for Paul, and Paul does an amazing ministry, and we have a huge portion of the New Testament because of that. And so it matters for your lives, it matters for those that you're in authority over, it matters for the church. So choose to respond well to Christ.
kind of sounds like there's a theme here that we keep going back to the prison thing. <laughs> um, what struck me is that when that happened, when the earthquake happened and their shackles came off, that they stayed. They didn't leave. How many of us would have ran for the doors, you know? And I pray that we have the faith to stay, to stay. To the, the I often think is, I wonder if that where the word came, awesome came from, because you're in such awe of what they're listening to, that they stayed instead of leaving. And I, I often, when I was going through this, I'd think, you know, you say, you know, follow what the Lord tells you. And I remember, and I often said it to my kids, but my my dad would say something and they go, I'd go, well, why? I? Because I said so. You know, that was his answer. Because I said so. Do, Lord, do what the Lord asked you because he said so. one of the favorite pieces that I have in, in the whole book of Acts is in the beginning when they were starting to grow the church and obedience and I'm jumping off what everybody's saying about obedience and I forgot my glasses but it said <clears throat> in the verse one Jesus or chapter one Jesus told them stay in Jerusalem stay there because something's coming something's coming and so there's the obedience right there Listen to what Jesus said. So they stayed. Then you jump into to chapter 2, and they were all gathered together. And to me, that means something, too. To be all gathered together, what were they doing? Probably they were singing and praying. And what happened when they did that? The Holy Spirit came. And so the lesson for me is to be obedient, to gather together, not to try to do it on our own to gather together, to be united in worship, united in obedience, and united in praise. And when we do that, we can expect the move of God. I, um, I am thinking about New Year's Eve, 1972 or 73, I'm not sure which, and I grew up in Brooklyn. I remember everybody would go out and bang pots, and I foolishly went out and banged enamelware pots, which is not a good idea. There's great accountability on New Year's Day if you bang enamelware pots to celebrate the new year as a kid. But um, <laughs> there was such an uproar on my street and no traffic in the middle of the night. And it was because it was 1972, maybe three. Um, and there was a lot of turmoil in our country politically and there was a little trouble with the president and the transition of power was very awkward and the culture was in huge upheaval. But uh, Crunchy Crunkshanks was down the block uh, and he had all his uh, Jesus people, teenage friends over. They probably looked like Rick then. And, uh, and they were dancing in the streets. You know, you heard a lot about dancing in the streets then, but they were dancing in the streets before the Lord. And it was such joy. And um, I remember that, and I remember not getting it. And um, it was years, decades later, uh, before I met Christ in Thailand. But as I went through this um, Acts, the continuing story, I felt so connected with the church. I felt so connected with all those Jesus people and crunchy crook shanks of the world and everybody that walk with him. We're all just part of the same thing. And I was very struck on something so simple um, when uh, Peter and John go to pray and they're by the beautiful gate and um, they 
pray for the guy and he's healed, you know, and we would sing it with our children. They went walking and leaping and praising God. I mean, that's a big miracle. Um, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. That's what I expect when I think of Jesus people. That's what I think when I think of the big, uh, we're going to do the ax thing and see miracles thing. But it's equally astounding that the next day, uh, Peter and John get called on the carpet. Um, kind of like the thrill after banging the enamel pots. Here it goes. <laughs> and... Um, So then they had Peter and John brought before them, and they began to question them. By what power did you do this? And then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, just to say, just to say the truth is an unbelievable act of the Holy Ghost. And to have it believed is equally astounding. And there's a miracle. Rulers and elders of the people, if we're being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone the builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given unto mankind by which we must be saved. I am so struck at the very succinct power of that word that came out of somebody filled with the Holy Spirit. And it resonates and it speaks to us and it's available in all its power and all the miracles that might flow from it, the greatest of which is the cleansing of one soul. Boy, so, so many things in the book of Acts, but as I'm sitting here thinking about one of the things that was maybe just a real new, um, Im, 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 had impact in my life for the first time that I really can remember in such a tangible way is as I'm studying the book of Acts in such a great, concise way, and yet with enough time to really dig in and really kind of feel it and apprehend it, Rick says I have this penchant for like envisioning things. I guess it's the, the actor director in me, like, wow, what did that scene look like? Um, and I, I, I picture it, and, and this time around though, um, kind of like what Teresa just alluded to, the sense of I belong to that era, and I belong to that era because I, I know that it, I've always known it was the same Holy Spirit, but did I really apprehend that this wasn't like what the, the church was doing and it was a new thing here and a new thing in this generation and it's a new thing and a, the Holy Spirit has come and then he comes again. No, it's the exact same person. He was like in the room with those people, with the, the tongues of fire. He was, that same Holy Spirit was in the prison. That same Holy Spirit was in that room when the elders and Paul hugged each other's necks. And you know, the, some of the nights when we would sit in that room while we're there and I would say, wow, that same guy is with us. He was with them and they're so much just my brother. They're, they're just my brother. And someday I'm gonna sit with them and talk with them and hear their stories because we are so connected. We are all brothers together. We're, we're brothers with those crunchy crookshanks or whoever they were. Um, we're brothers with the people of the first awakening and the, the big camps that were happening out on the prairies, which I don't even have a box for morning to night and then sleeping in a wagon and getting up morning to night just praising and having a camp meeting. And they're my brothers and sisters and that Holy Spirit 
is the same guy that's right here right now with us. Um, he's seen it all. He's been their comforter. And then he didn't take a nap or anything and come back and be my comforter. He, he, no, he's like this constant presence that he's, I'm participating in the same Holy Spirit that they participated with. I find that amazing and humbling and um, wow, I can't wait to get to heaven and meet all these people. And I feel so privileged to be such a, a part of such a host of beings and that this same Holy Spirit that came and spoke to, to Paul is the same Holy Spirit that visits me every morning and walks with me every day and watches over me every night. I, I, I find that amazing. And every story and every character that we met in the book of Acts is my brother and sister. And that's so powerful to me. So I enjoyed it. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you all, uh, those of you that were able to come up and share. Really good. It's, uh, I, I, I know that uh, we have, this is probably the fifth, maybe sixth um, fall series we've done. Um, and uh, each one's been so rich. Um, certainly acts the continuing story. Very, very, very inspiring. So um, today we wrap up the, the preaching. And as I said, we, you know, we're uh, here in Acts chapter 28. And I want to share a few thoughts from Acts chapter 28. Um, first of all, the, the book closes in a way that um, uh, for many, many years, I could not remember the ending of the book of Acts. Um, and for those of you that might have seen the Facebook Live this week, I, um, I shared a little bit of my, my more recent story of, of the book of Acts, chapter 28, um, because I, in some ways, the book of Acts ends not with a dramatic exhortation, dramatic mandate, a dramatic... No, there's no bow, it just... It almost like it ends this wonderful story. If you can imagine reading through a novel and you get to chapter 28, you read this and you expect to turn the page. You, you really do, you expect to turn the page here. And, uh, and I think there's a reason for that uh, because the page is being turned. The page is still being turned. It's the continuing story. And uh, that sense of continuum um, that has been already mentioned by others, I mean, I think that's really significant here as we read through the book of Acts and realize what happened then can happen now. Um, that that's the same Holy Spirit working today as it was then. In other words, as much as this is incredibly inspirational, it's inspirational not simply to make us say, wow, inspirational, but it's inspirational to say, this is, this is how we can live now. This is how we can walk with the Lord now. And so in some ways, the, 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 the book closes in a kind of a, a somewhat non-dramatic manner. Um, uh, and I'll, uh, I'll share with you a couple of years ago my own story on the tail end of the book of Acts because it was you know, kind of interesting. And now I'll, I'll remember the end of the book of Acts. Uh, I won't forget it. So um, in 2018, Darlene and I uh, really felt impressed that it was time to make a transition out of our home in Madrid and to, uh, uh, to move into uh, to an apartment. And so we processed that. Uh, we had lived in the house in Madrid for 34 years. Um, Nice home, so many memories, um, nice property. I mean, it was just, it was just really, really nice. And so it was a, uh, it was a, it was a, a major transition for us. Um, 
very emotionally difficult for me. In other words, and I, I'm, I'm just, I tend to not be one who's given to change easily to begin with. Um, and so you take a, a home that's filled with so many memories and you know you can walk through from room to room and you're just like this is what happened there remember what happened there and I was sitting there and you know we had that meeting back then and you know just all kind it's just like it's just like so much there um, and uh, uh, but we realized it was time for us to to move and so we made the decision uh, we processed it a lot we prayed a lot we got many confirmations and encouragements um, but that didn't mean it wasn't emotionally difficult. How many of you know that when God speaks and you say yes, it doesn't mean it's the end of the emotional, you know, controversy. Um, you know, it doesn't mean it's the end of the the emotional. It's, it's all going to be great. In other words, I was still struggling emotionally. The uh, the sense of oh, but I don't want to let go of that part of our past and you know what's ahead. Not really sure. Um, and so I was praying and I felt like one day in my prayer time. I felt like the Lord said to me to go to the end of the book of Acts. And the last verses. And I thought that's, I thought that was interesting because it was an interesting way to the, for the Holy Spirit to speak. Um, but secondly, because as I thought about it, I realized I can't remember how the book of Acts ends. I know how Matthew ends, I know how Mark ends, and how Luke ends, and how John ends, but I, I don't really know how the book of Acts ends. I know how the book, the book of Romans ends. I know, I know the ends of so many of these, these fantastic New Testament books, but I didn't know how the book of Acts end, ended. But I felt like the Holy Spirit wants to speak to me through the ending of the book of Acts. So I got to the book of Acts, chapter 28, opened up to verse 30, and read, then Paul dwelt two whole years in his own rented house. And I was like, wow. It ain't going to be so bad. <laughs> There's life after you sell your house. You know, and, and it's kind of interesting. And isn't, that, isn't it like the Holy Spirit to speak to us in a personal way? Um, and, and, uh, and I love that part of walking with the Lord. But he said, Paul dwelt two whole years in his own rented house and received all who came to him. It became a word that was very comforting to me, but in some ways, like I say, it captured the idea of, to me that the ending of the book of Acts wasn't as dramatic. It wasn't like a, and now, everybody, it's time to go on. It's just it, almost like this, you call it a denouement in, in French. It's the, it just almost ends quietly as if to say, and Acts 29 is waiting. Who will be part of the, the next turn of the page? And you realize, ah, that's where we are. We're in Acts 29, where we are the continuing story until Jesus comes again. So this book that is incredibly inspiring is meant to inspire us to pursue him and expect that we can live today in the way that they lived then. And with that, I want to share that looking back over the book of Acts in this series, one of the things I realized is that what we have in these 28 chapters is the story of, of men and women who lived lives of purposed discipleship. If, there, if, if this is an exemplary book in any way, it's because they lived lives with a sense of purposed discipleship. You can read any of these chapters, and really what you find is inspiration on how we ought to be living, how we should be focusing ourselves. I even read the last, you know, last couple of verses and uh, read them again. I realized Paul dwelled two whole years in his own rented house, received all who came to him. That book could have ended any number of ways. And it could have been focused on, and it wouldn't have been wrong, could have been focused on Paul retired to a nice place, felt like he had done his work, and now some Paul time. But you know what? Still living for Jesus. 
He's got a few more days left. Living for Jesus. That's, that's what he's focused on. You know, again, nothing wrong with having things and thank God for all the blessings he pours into our lives. But I realize, you know, this guy is crazy for Jesus. Right to the end. Crazy for Jesus. And you know what? That's the story you read about over and over and over again. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11 is on my heart this morning, but because in some ways it is, the, it is the apt description of the saints we read about in the book of Acts. Verse 11 of Revelation 12 says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. I mean, sold out, crazy for Jesus. You know, what's the guy's name? Crunchy. <laughs> Crunchy Crookshank. I want to meet him someday. <laughs> okay. Um, in other words, they're crazy. They're like, they're just like so sold out for Jesus, it's off the charts. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. They're living for Jesus. They're getting their, their greatest sense of purpose, their greatest sense of identity, their greatest sense of, of reason for being from their relationship with Christ. And so really, in some ways, if the book of Acts is anything, it's, it's inspiration to us to live for Jesus like all out. You know, sometimes we... We think about this life and we think, what am I going to get out of it? That's the wrong question. It's just the wrong question. We need to live for his glory. We need to live for his purposes. And so some of the things I see in the, in the book of Acts, people who are living for Christ, number one. Number two, they're loving their lives, even, not loving their lives, even unto death. Number three, they're identifying with the believers. In other words, they identify with the family of God. That becomes their sense of identity. You get that in Acts chapter 2. As we read about the early church, they're gathering steadfastly. I mean, they're devoted, devotedly gathering uh, for the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, the breaking of bread, and prayers. They identify with the people of God. They're serving one another. As you get into chapter 4, chapter 5, they're, they're, they're willingly and voluntarily bringing their finances, laying it at the apostles' feet, and just, and just sharing with, another, with one another. And they're witnessing to a world that sometimes is receptive, but sometimes is very hostile. And what we see is they don't stop. They don't stop. You know, we were, uh, Darlene and I, in the Facebook Live, we were noting on a number, of, uh, a number of mornings that whenever Paul would mention one particular thing, well, there were actually two things. When he mentioned either one of these two things, it was like the meeting would just oftentimes just break down in chaos. The two things were the salvation of the Gentiles and the resurrection of the dead. Whereas those two things tended to cause a bit of a meltdown in the, in the meeting. Okay? You find that right here in Acts chapter 28 in the section we read. In other words, he's sharing with the Jews. Some believe, some aren't believing. But you know what he goes along and does? He mentions the salvation of the Gentiles and things just fall apart. Okay? In some ways, what you could say is Paul... Haven't you learned by now? <gasps> Haven't you gotten the message that you're good until you mention, mention that? Why don't you just not mention it? Why don't you just say everything else except that? And you know what? They keep preaching. They love not their lives unto death. They're witnessing the truth of the gospel to a lost and dying world. They are absolutely that crazy for Jesus. Knowing that there's a high likelihood that people aren't going to like this. You know what they do? They say it anyway. Why? Because they know that there'll be some who open their hearts. There'll be some who respond and inherit eternal life. I mean, it's just absolutely amazing. And I see these men and women who are like fixed 
on Jesus. And to me, it's inspiring. And again, we have the story of these. And I think sometimes, if to the, I, I think one of the things, and darling, you, you kind of mention it today as well as others. I think the idea that this sense in which we're part of this continuum, that's really a big part of what I think God's done in this series for us, is the sense of, you know what, we, there's not meant to be a, a stop and then a different dispensation of some sort. This is, this is the book of Acts continuing, continuing right where we are, right here, right now. Imagine for a moment if northern New York was suddenly flooded by crazy Jesus people. I'm telling you. We, now, when I came to Christ, that's, uh, that's actually what was happening. <laughs> It's kind of an interesting time. I came to the Lord in 1973. Um, and uh, you couldn't necessarily find them everywhere, but you, you found a lot of them. Um, crazy Jesus people. Even the media. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it was just Jesus talk everywhere. Um, and uh, you know what? They, they didn't get the le no nobody They didn't read the memo. There are people who won't like this. They said, you know what? I'm witnessing to the lost and dying world anyway. Um, why? Because it's true. And the gospel is the power of salvation to everyone who believes. And even if people don't accept it, it's still the power of the gospel, uh, the power of God to salvation to everyone who does receive. And so you have this sense of a mobilized company of people. Saints, God wants us to be that mobilized company of people. Living for Christ, loving not our lives even to death, identifying with the believers, serving one another, and witnessing to a lost and dying world. And you know what? I think one of the, one of the deceptions that we're all prone to is the deception that someday I'll do that, but not today. Someday, yeah, someday, Lord, make me that. In a sense, the Lord's saying, how about today? How about today? How about today? How about today is the day we give our lives to Christ in a, in a way that says, I'm going to live for the purposes of God above everything else. I want to read uh, a few paragraphs from Rick Warren's book, Purpose Driven Life. Um, it's, a, it's a very good book. No, no book authored by anyone is perfect uh, or complete, but this is a very good book, and it's got some great thoughts. And I want to read... Uh, from an early portion of Rick Warren's book, The Purpose Driven Life. He writes, it's not about you. The purpose of your life is far greater than your own personal fulfillment, your peace of mind, or even your happiness. It's far greater than your family, your career, or even your wildest dreams and ambitions. If you want to know why you were placed on this planet, you must begin with God. You were born by his purpose and for his purpose. The search for the purpose of life has puzzled people for thousands of years. That's because we typically begin at the wrong starting point, ourselves. We ask self-centered questions like, what do I want to be? What should I do with my life? What are my goals, my ambitions, my dreams for my future? But focus, focusing on ourselves will never reveal our life's purpose. The Bible says, it is God who directs the lives of his creatures. Everyone's life is in his power. Contrary to what many popular books, movies, and seminars tell you, you won't discover your life's meaning by looking within yourself. You've probably tried that already. You didn't create yourself, so there's no way you can tell yourself what you were created for. If I handed you an invention you had never seen before, you wouldn't know its purpose, and the invention itself wouldn't be able to tell you either. Only the creator or the owner's manual could reveal its purpose. Saints, let's live for the purposes of God. How about now you know why not here why not now why not us 
why don't why don't why don't we ask the Holy Spirit to to just transform us, mobilize us, make us the crazy crookshank, cr cr crunchy, <laughs> crunchy crookshank? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> no, I like crunchy. Um, make, make us the people who did crazy things in the book of Acts. Today's the day. Let's pray. Father, I come before you, and I thank you for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And Lord, I thank you that, that there is a continued outpouring. I thank you for the continued work of the Spirit of God in our lives. Lord, what a wonderful, amazing thing. And Lord, I pray that more than ever, we would live lives of purposed discipleship, living for Christ, loving not our lives even to death, identifying with the people of God, serving one another, and witnessing to the world. Lord, I pray, would you, would you stir us afresh in these days? Lord, as we talked about earlier today and Earlier in this series, we don't want we don't want a safe place. We have a safe place in you. We want boldness. We want boldness to uh, to live in a way that is just shows a a certain reckless abandon to this temporal, fleeting lifetime, but demonstrates that our eyes and our affection are focused on the eternal purposes of God. Father, I pray for that. I pray for boldness in our witness to the world. I pray for uh, just, just, just zeal in serving one another. I pray for a heartfelt love in the manner in which we identify with, with one another as believers, the family of God. Lord, I pray that, that we, would, we would live lives of, of, a, of a sense of reckless abandon, even, 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 even to the point of death, or that we would live for Christ. Lord, so many times we, we begin by asking the wrong questions. What do I want to be? What should I do with my life? What are my goals, my ambitions, my dreams? What do I want my future to be? Lord, I pray that today would be a day when you, you just change, change the orientation of our compasses. What is your heart, Lord? What do you say? What is your intention? What is your purpose? Father, I pray for that. I pray blessing as we follow you and that we would have, as so many things, chapters of the book of Acts record the true joy that comes from living lives of purpose-filled discipleship. Lord, there was great joy in that city. They were all filled with joy. Over and over, we read about it. The true, the true hallmark of people who've laid down their lives and received something far greater in Christ. Amen. 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 Good. Well, saints, God bless you. Let's continue as we live out Acts chapter 29.